What's up guys, Rogue9 here. Last time we did bullet holes, this time it's those impulses. What are they? How do they work? Let's find out. Now, as we learned in my last video, the new caliber-based destruction model in Rainbow Six Siege has two different elements to it, different sized bullet holes and different impulses depending on the weapon's caliber. And as we also found out, there are five different bullet hole sizes for regular weapons and three different sizes for shotguns. While that information was pretty interesting, I guess, it wasn't all that useful. The thing you really need to understand when you're shooting holes in walls are the impulses. Shooting a wall once or twice or a few times will create bullet holes. If you shoot a wall enough, it will create an impulse, a larger hole that breaks away. And it's those larger holes that I will be exploring in this video. So let's start off with the most basic concept, how are these impulses created? Basically what you have to imagine is that every bullet hole you put into a wall has a sphere of influence around it. And if you create enough bullet holes with overlapping spheres of influence, you create an impulse. Sounds a bit complicated, right? Let's look at it in action. If I shoot this regular wall six times with the bullets close together, you can see that it breaks in a hole. How close do the bullets need to be together? Or in other words, how large is this sphere of influence? Well, that depends on the bullet hole size. Weapons that create small bullet holes need to be fired quite close together, while larger bullet holes have larger spheres of influence. And as it happens, the sphere of influence is actually the same size as the impulse that is created by those particular bullets. Another interesting and important thing to note is that when an impulse is triggered, it is triggered around each and every one of the bullet holes that are influencing each other. That means that when the bullet holes are very close together, the resulting impulses will actually mostly overlap and create a relatively small hole. If instead you spread the bullets out a bit while still remaining within the spheres of influence, you can create a much larger impulse. And the concept of impulses being created around each and every bullet hole is also important when you're firing weapons of different caliber at the same wall. Even though for almost all weapons the number of shots required to create an impulse is the same, the impulse size will be that of the largest bullet hole, since it will for the most part overlap that of the smaller holes. So that's the basic concept and I hope it kind of makes sense so far. As we start getting more detailed into this mechanic now, I will be splitting the information up into three different categories. You have regular weapons, which is almost all of them, shotguns, and then there are three special weapons that can be grouped together, although one of them is quite unique. Ooh, isn't that exciting? And for each of those groups, we'll also be distinguishing between two different breachable surfaces that you can find in pretty much every level. So before we get into these weapons, let's first look at the two different surfaces we have in the game. I'm going to call one of them plasterboard and the other wood, although there are some exceptions where there are wooden walls that actually behave like plasterboard. So I guess the main thing to take away is that there are two different types of walls and they will each react differently to being shot at. Now the first one, as I mentioned, is usually plasterboard or drywall style. And if you shoot at it with regular weapons, you will need six shots that influence each other to create an impulse. The tougher walls and also floors are usually made of wood and if you're using regular bullets you will need 10 shots to create an impulse instead of 6. Also the impulses on wooden floors and walls are much less predictable than they are on drywall. With these tougher wooden surfaces you usually get kind of a splintering effect and that means that the size and shape of your impulses can vary even if you're using the same weapon. And one thing that was quite interesting to see is that once I started playing around with these impulses, I found that they are actually quite consistent. Confounding variables such as muzzle attachments or distance to the wall or angle at which you shoot the wall have no effect at all. The size of the impulses as well as the number of shots it will take to create one will always remain the same. Another important question to consider is what happens with the bullets once you shoot through a wall? Well, for the most part, and this goes for drywall as well as the tough wooden walls, when you shoot the first layer, you will also overpenetrate and create bullet holes in the second layer, but these will only do 50% damage. 
So for instance, if you shoot through drywall six times, you create an impulse. You'll also have six bullet holes on the other side of the wall, but these will only have done 50% damage, which means you will need three extra shots in that region to create an impulse. And of course, the same goes for the tougher wooden walls, except that you will have 10 bullet holes already and you will need five extra shots. So that's how it works in general, but there seem to be some exceptions to this rule. If we look at these light wooden walls in the skyscraper level, shooting them creates bullet holes on the initial side, but on the plasterboard on the other side, it creates these sort of fake bullet holes. And I call them fake bullet holes because they're not real holes, you can't really see through. And the important part is that they also didn't do any damage to the wall. So if you want to create an impulse here, you will need a full another six shots. Incidentally, the same effect occurs if you shoot through one of the other two types of walls and you hit the studs in between. And of course, in this case, it makes perfect sense. Hitting the indestructible studs in between means that you shouldn't be doing any damage to the second wall. But why this would also happen with some random walls every time you shoot through them doesn't really make sense and I actually seem to think that this might be a bug. If it is intentional, it certainly doesn't make any sense to me. Tough walls you shoot right through and create holes on the other side, the weaker ones you don't? Meh, I don't buy it. Now to wrap up this section that covers most of the pistols, submachine guns and rifles in the game, let's take a quick look at a size comparison of the different impulses created by the various calibers. I'm going to conduct this test against one of the weaker walls rather than the strong wooden walls since like I mentioned before against solid wooden walls you have this splintering effect which makes the hole size kind of unpredictable. And here are the results. Unsurprisingly little bullets make little impulses while big bullet holes make big impulses. But I think it's still useful to see the impulse sizes side by side for comparison. If you want to know which weapons create which size of bullet hole, go and check out my last video. In that, I've grouped all the weapons together according to the five bullet hole sizes, and although most weapons fit into these categories quite intuitively, there are some that might surprise you. And with that, we've already covered 77.586% of all the weapons in the game. Brilliant, let's move on to the shotguns. Ah, the shotguns, with their unpredictable shot patterns and supermassive power at close range, they are a true joy to test with not. Since shotguns are the de facto breaching weapon in Rainbow Six Siege, it is not surprising that they behave slightly differently to the regular weapons. Let's first look at how many shots it takes to create impulses in the two different types of walls. As it turns out, this is exactly the same for both drywall and wooden walls, and I would call it sort of one plus one. So when you have a pellet impact in a wall, it only takes one additional shot near it to trigger an impulse. Of course, if you're close enough to a wall, the actual pellet strikes will interact with each other and immediately create impulses with one shot. But here's something interesting. I discovered that shotguns actually have two different impulse sizes depending on the distance to the wall. If you are further than 7 meters away from the wall you're shooting at, the impulses created by the pellets will be tiny. If your distance to the wall is 7 meters or closer, each pellet will create a larger size of impulse, which will correspond to one of the three different shotgun bullet hole sizes, depending on which shotgun you're using. So the optimal distance for creating a large hole with a shotgun is around this 7 meter mark, because here you'll be getting a larger pellet spread while still being able to take advantage of the larger impulse per pellet. The only issue here is that if you also want to break the wooden studs so that you can climb through the hole that you've made, depending on the random shot dispersion, you might actually end up missing all of the studs at this distance. Now besides having two different impulse sizes depending on distance, there is another concept that affects the shotguns that is very important to note. And that is the concept of compromised walls. If you shoot at a wall that has no prior damage and the pellets don't land close enough together to interact with each other, you end up with bullet holes rather than impulses. Okay, but look at what happens if you have a wall that is already compromised. That means a wall that already has an impulse in it. If you fire a shotgun at a compromised wall, each and every pellet will immediately generate an impulse, at least for the first or second shot, since later shots will no longer have the effect. They will just start creating regular bullet holes again. 
So maybe really the best tactic on getting through a wall is making sure that your first shot creates immediate impulses by being fairly close to the wall and then move back to 6 or 7 meters and take advantage of the shot dispersion while keeping your maximum impulse size per pellet. And maybe one final thing to consider if you're using a shotgun is also the angle to the wall. And this goes particularly if you're trying to create impulses with a single shot. And this has nothing to do with the way that the impulses are created, but more to do with the shot dispersion, since if you're shooting at a flat angle, the shots will spread out more across the wall, thereby failing to interact with each other even at close range. And as much as it was a pain to figure all this out, that's actually it for the shotguns. And last, but certainly not least, we have those three special weapons that are kind of different from everything else. And as it happens, those are also the three weapons that generate the largest bullet hole size, at least for non-shotguns. And these are, of course, the DP-28, the D-50 and the OTS-03 SVU. Now, of course, since all three of these guns produce the same bullet holes, they also produce the same size of impulse. But the number of shots required to create those impulses is different for each gun. Let's start out by taking a closer look at Tachanka's mighty DP-28. When shooting at the lighter walls, you need one plus three shots to create an impulse, that is, one shot from the DP-28 and then three shots from regular weapons. If you're going to shoot just the DP-28, it's two shots to create an impulse. Shooting at tougher wooden walls or floors, you will require one plus seven shots, or a total of four shots from the DP-28 to create one of those magical impulses. The Desert Eagle, or D-50 as it's known in the game, is slightly stronger than the DP-8. Against weaker walls, it only needs one plus two shots, or two shots from the D-50. And against tougher walls and floors, it needs one plus five, or a total of three D-50 shots. And to round this video off, I've saved the best for last, it's Glaz's sniper rifle, the OTS-03. In terms of the number of shots required to create an impulse, this weapon functions just like the shotguns. So no matter what type of wall you're shooting at, it will always be on a 1 plus 1 basis. One shot from your sniper rifle plus any additional bullet within its sphere of influence. And of course that additional bullet could also be from the OTS-03 itself. So shooting twice at a wall, close enough together, will create an impulse. And that on its own is quite good, but there is more. In terms of its breaching capabilities, the OTS-03 is kind of a hybrid between a rifle and a shotgun. And that is because this sniper rifle also has the capability of one-shot impulsing compromised walls. So if a wall or a section of a wall has been compromised with any kind of impulse in any space, then the OTS-03 will create impulses in that section of wall with each shot. So let's look at this in practice. If you have a completely pristine wall, or even if there are bullet holes in it but no impulses, shooting this wall with the OTS-03 will generate simply bullet holes. But as I mentioned, if the wall has been compromised by an impulse anywhere in the wall, let's just go ahead and create a tiny impulse in the corner down here. Then, as you can see, each and every shot creates an immediate impulse. And that is actually something really interesting and really important to know. If you're playing as a sniper and you're trying to support your team from the outside and you want to create a line of sight through a wall, don't just start shooting that wall all over the place. Make sure that your first two shots are close together and then, once the wall has been compromised, then you can really let loose and just create large holes with each and every shot. Keep in mind though that sometimes large continuous sections of breachable wall might actually be subdivided within the game, so you'll have to make sure that you compromise both sides in order to be able to single shot impulse. The OTS-03 has an advantage over the shotguns in that the compromised wall mechanic seems to last until the entire wall is gone, whereas for shotguns it only lasts for a shot or two. But of course shotguns have the advantage that they can also destroy the studs within the wall, allowing you to actually climb through, whereas the OTS cannot do that. But nevertheless, this is a really cool mechanic that makes the OTS-03 stand out head and shoulders above all of the other weapons. And that's it! Now you know how impulses are created within the game and how you can use the different characteristics of each weapon to your advantage. 
Now I know that was a lot of information to take in and I hope I managed to explain it all in a decent way, but as always if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments below. And finally, before wrapping up, just a quick show of hands, is anyone playing Battlefield 1? Yeah, it's a pretty good game, isn't it? If you're playing Battlefield 1 and you enjoy this style of Rainbow Six videos I'm making, I can guarantee you you will like the Battlefield 1 videos made by Fog of Gaming. He uses an experimental approach that is very similar to mine in order to break down the in-game mechanics. Very entertaining and informative videos, so I can only recommend you go and take a look. Link on screen now, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.